From the College by the Lake, meeting the personalities and discussing the issues that affect all of Coeur d'Alene and the Inland Northwest, we are the North Idaho College Public Forum. And now, here's your moderator, political scientist, Tony Stewart. We're very pleased to welcome to our program today Frank Velasquez, who is a student at North Idaho College, and he's a very special student, and that's why we've invited him to the program. Uh, very recently, he won the National Junior College Athletic Association Wrestling Championship at the weight category of 134 pounds. He's also very special in the sense that he was also chosen as an academic All-American student, and uh, it's so wonderful when you see someone that's that successful in athletics that takes all those hours and has the same kind of performance in the classroom. And frankly, congratulate you on those achievements, and we look forward to talking to you about how you balance uh, your time uh, uh, academic responsibilities with the time on the mat and all the work that is uh, consumed there. Our guest is also from Chelan, Washington, and he's majoring in education. I understand he wants to teach biology, and in addition to that, uh, he also, I think, is interested in coaching. Again, Frank, I welcome you to the program. Thank you. And I'm so pleased to have on the panel to join me in questioning our guest today, uh, Lloyd Marsh, who chairs the Division of Physical Science at North Idaho College, and he's been a former chair of the faculty assembly. He's very active in many activities on our campus and in our community, and I shall ask Lloyd to commence the questioning. Thank you, Tony. Frank, maybe the best way to start off with this would be to describe for our viewers just what it takes to become a national champion. We know that you wrestle throughout the season and then this culminates in a national championship. You might tell our viewers where it was and how many people were competing and how you worked your way up through that to the, to the top. Well, uh, basically it's, uh, it, it there's, consists of uh, down the national tournament. It's held in Bismarck, North Dakota and uh, there's 24 uh, wrestlers per weight class. I was wrestling 134. I uh, had to wrestle five matches to to win the national title. But through the uh, through the season, we wrestled in various of uh, dual meets, various of uh, tournaments, uh, just preparing us, gearing us up for that uh, national tournament. So when we got there, we we knew what we were against and what we had to do to come out on top. The competition at that level must be pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, that's that's the whole idea behind it. Is, uh, the ability to compete, and that's, that's what makes it real fun. Oh, that's amazing. Just as the other side of it now, the academic side of it, an academic All-American, does this require a certain grade point to be considered? For yeah, it, uh, as a student athlete, you have to uh, carry 12 credits uh, per semester, and uh, in those 12 credits, you have to have a three-point or better average, wow. and then you um, and you have to have a successful winning season along with that, and then that, that requires you to become, a, an all, uh, with the good winning season, high record, then that be, gives you an All-American, and the, the, um, the, the three-pointer better for your 12 credits gives you your academic All-American. Fantastic. I'd love to go back and uh, deal with this. I, I know Lloyd joins me in congratulating you on both those achievements. Uh, let's go back and talk about the process of uh, what you go through for a whole year in preparing uh, for that final uh, tournament, the national one. Uh, would you take us through uh, the whole year? Uh, uh, it's big and meal with the wrestling team, starting with the practice and all the things you go through in the season and the regionals and the nationals, because I know a lot of our viewers that know, but there'll be others that don't know how long that is and all the steps that are involved. Well, uh, we got, Coach Owen has us arrive here at school uh, the first uh, about a, a week before school starts. That would kinda, be in August. Uh, uh, in August, exactly. And then once school starts, we start running as a team. And we usually go from three miles to five mile runs every day and lift uh, uh, three days a week. And we continue that up, up the rest of the season. Once we get into the, the core, uh, core of the season, which starts about the uh, middle of October, we start going up in the room and actually drilling. And then we start uh, competing about the... Uh, about November, and uh, once we start competing, we first start out with a f couple dual meets, and um, during, and then after those dual meets, we start in the, going in some tournaments, and um, each tournament we go to, it's uh, some are some are real tough tournaments, and some aren't so tough, but basically it's just gearing us up for the national tournament, and that's where we want to put our cream of the crop and and uh, go for it there, but um, it it 
during the season, I say we, we lift three days a week, we run on our own, we do stairs, and and towards the end of the uh, of the season, we do uh, a lot of mental preparation, like uh, coach will sit down before practice. I want to come back to the mental, and it's very important in any sport, but I want to uh, go through the and all that physical exercise that you're doing to prepare yourself. But the, even before the season, the regular season starts, on this particular team, uh, since it's been so successful, I believe John Owens won nation, uh, seven national exactly. championships in, what, 11 years, yes. something like that. Uh, obviously, there's some mechanisms that are working, but because of his success, and he has such a large team, so many people come, you have almost uh, a total of three teams. Tell us a little bit about how you make even the team at your weight category. You have to compete to even... Yeah, we do. We have ranking matches, and uh, during those ranking matches, you have to, uh, there's a certain amount of, there's whoever's at, the, at your weight, you have to beat uh, your... Uh, your teammates in order to get the varsity position. You have also, we go out in front of crowds to, to wrestle our last two or three matches, at the, the last uh, couple of ranking matches. And, and that's very uh, competitive because there are people here on the second and third string. Exactly. That would be uh, on most college teams, first string. Yeah, exactly. They'd be on a lot of the colleges we compete against, they'd be on their first string. And that's what makes it so tough is, is that uh, we have that, the competition, uh, we have it up in the room. As so when we get to the national tournament and too tough for competition, it's it's hardly no different. You're just so used to being so tough in that room that you you're ready for it when you get out there. Let's take it to the second step now. After all this competition, it's some of your toughest of the year in practice. Then you have your regular season, and you go against not only community colleges but you go against a lot of university varsities, don't you? Tell us about the season, how long it is, and the kind well, of matches you it, have. It um, it starts back in uh, actually it starts from day one from when we start school. And uh, then uh, we run, do all that uh, training and stuff, getting us in good shape. And, and we don't start wrestling till um, actually the end of October, first part of November. And we finish up in uh, about mid-February. How many dual matches would you have in that time? Oh, we've probably wrestled a total right around uh, 20 dual meets and right around five tournaments. And five tournaments. And in, in, in those, you have several universities, and you've defeated a number of university varsities, haven't you, as a team? Yeah, we have. We, uh, we've, we've gone up, uh, see, who, oh, we wrestled uh, Western Montana, uh, uh, Pacific University, and, and a few other uh, four-year colleges. And uh, it's uh, it makes it nice because then you you kind of see where you're at and where you need to go and what you need to do when it gets down to crunch time. Then after all that's over and if you've survived the injuries, uh, <laughs> then comes the the regional tournament. And what part of the, the Northwest does that cover? That covers um, let's see, it covers Washington, uh, covers uh, Idaho, Oregon, Wyoming. And uh, there's, I think there's eight teams, ten Montana or eight teams. Then. No, I don't think Montana's in our, our region. Uh, but, uh, Oregon like is in the region. A, Oregon's in the region. And uh, it covers like ten teams in, in the region. And as now it's, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to get more teams in. And the reason is because a lot, a lot of junior colleges don't have wrestling programs. It's hard to get them sponsored, and et cetera. It's not like real popular as far as basketball you know you got all your sponsors and that but wrestling's uh wrestling's probably one of the few fewer sports that junior colleges have yeah. Lloyd? yes I, well i'd like to go on the other side of it because i am an instructor here at school and of course we're always interested in the the balance for the student athlete and i'm just curious as to uh, with all of the rigor and it is rigorous there's certainly a rigorous training program and a rigorous wrestling program um, what kind of schedule do you set up for yourself for your uh, academic studies? Well, uh, basically, it's um, it's just a matter of finding free time, and you have a lot of free time going to school because you have in between classes and et cetera after practices, and you you don't I I try to sit down and not to go into cram sessions because then you forget a lot of stuff. I like to sit down like maybe after a class and go over a few notes and just take it into choppy sessions at a time. And then when it comes down to exams, you've kind of, you just have to review more or less. And it makes it a lot easier than trying to sit down for five hours and, and study it. I all think there's, I think there's a real message there, right? <laughs> In other words, it takes a continuous conditioning physically to prepare yourself to wrestle, but it takes this continuing 
uh, contact with your academics, academics to maintain that level? Exactly. It, uh, it's, it has to kind of have a balance of both, yeah. you know, you can't, uh, for the first part, we're here to get an education and uh, that's the way I feel and, and then we're here second to wrestle. So, uh, you know, you just divide up uh, little sessions where you're going to study and plug them in and then uh, you already have a set schedule for your, your uh, practice routines and that. Marvelous. So. Good for you. Uh, I just wanted to ask Frank a little bit a uh, question regarding his background. Did you wrestle in high school? I did. I was a, um, I wrestled, I started wrestling when I was about sixth grade uh -huh. and I wrestled out through high school. I was a uh, three-time state champion for uh, Lake Chelan High School, Class A, and I was second as a freshman. And uh, I always wanted to go to a big four-year school. I originally signed up with uh, Oregon State in um, Corvallis, but uh, then I wanted to go to Arizona State, and it uh, seems how I couldn't get released from a letter of intent. North Idaho College was also another choice, so I, that's how I ended up here at North that's Idaho good. College. We're very fortunate. Yes, we are, Lloyd. You also intrigued me with your comments about uh, what Lloyd was talking about, that you have to have commitment and dedication to your studies and to the athletic program. And what I think that uh, you have said, certainly this brought a message to everyone, is it's called organization, being organized and committed. And when one is well organized as you are, you have time for both and you also have free time. So many people procrastinate, and I think that's mm -hmm. one of the things that gets one in trouble, not only in school, but uh, exactly. in, in one's goals in life. But you intrigued me with the comment that you made, too, about athletics. That not only did you prepare yourself physically, uh, certainly over a long, long uh, period of time, but that as it comes closer and closer to the competition, that one has a mental preparation. And I'd like for you to share some of those with us, those thoughts. And I would suggest that that mental preparation goes uh, into other uh, fields and works in life, and you might be helpful to our viewers by explaining that. Well, uh, many people go through mental preparation in different ways. I like going through it as a, as a steps at a time I go through it is I analyze what my goal is, and then I'll go into uh, what I wanted, where I want to be at the end of that, at every goal. And uh, th I, uh, I do things as far as I've done this, uh, let's say uh, na the nationals, for example. I, I want. I, first, I say I want to be a national champ. Okay, then I'll, you go into well, I, I am a national champ, and you already make it like in a past tense that you've already accomplished it. That way, you you set your your brain in that gear that you you already done it. You can do it, and you want to be as positive as possible, and try to block out all negative thoughts, and just relax. Let you know, just gear, stay in, focus in on what you're doing and not try to block it off by uh, other thoughts. And every night, like before you go to bed, just kind of take 15 minutes or whatever and just kind of sit there and relax, analyze where, what is it you want to do and then go on. It doesn't take too long, just, just little things like that. And you always think as positive as possible. So I, I really hear you saying that, that, that you convinced yourself, first of all, that you are, are a national champion, even though the tournament might have exactly. been in the future, and that you're going to be better uh, in the competition than any other person to make yourself a champion. Exactly. That's, that's, uh, that's one of the main, main, uh, main key behind it is, is uh, gearing yourself to think as a national champ, as a uh, academic All-American, as a uh, as a student or whatever, you, you gear yourself because I feel that what you believe who you are and what you can do, you can accomplish that. And so you're using the same kind of procedure for your classroom studies that you're using on the mat. Exactly. It's the same, just basically the same stuff. It's, it's so mental people don't realize anything you do is so mental. A lot of it, you know, seven, at least 80% of it is so mental. And once you gear yourself into thinking that way, and, and as long as you believe, no matter what else anybody else believes, if you believe it, I think you can accomplish it. Well, uh, the the couple other things that come to mind from that. The second one is that when you're going to have a match and you're wrestling someone that you've wrestled before or you know about them or you've seen a uh, video of their okay. wrestling, do you visualize in advance as part of this mental attitude how you may wrestle that match? Yeah, you, uh, you want to see what techniques you might use or what techniques you want to emphasize on. And you just kind of gear yourself. You visualize, well, this, I'm going to take him down with a single. I'm going to turn him with the 
bar arm where I'm gonna let him up and and then take him back down, et cetera, et cetera. You, see that you program your yourself. You program. Yeah, it's just you just program your your yourself, your mind, and your body to work that way. I just can't resist this next question. Uh, there's a, the devil's advocate me because I'm a teacher. You see, let's suppose that you're wrestling as someone who's at your your caliber. You're both great champions, and you're meeting at the nationals. And that person's as mentally as tough as you happen to be. They've also visualized what they're going to do. Um, what can happen then? Well, it's pretty much a toss-up there. You know, I mean, some people say, "Man, the best man win." I always say, "I'm going to do it, no matter <laughs> what." You know, and and even if the outcome is different, yeah, I look at it as if if you went out there and gave it all you had, all you got, uh, then you shouldn't be ashamed of yourself because uh, uh, for somebody that's good, there's always somebody better. But apparently this year there wasn't in your weight category because you visualized it and you did it. Yeah, it, uh, it took a lot of preparation to do that and it would, uh, the outcome definitely was, was towards, my, uh, towards my way, but uh, well, hopefully it keeps going that way, but you know how, how it is. It's, uh, it's competition, that's what makes yeah. it fun. It really I have fun. one more question, I'll go back to Lloyd. Uh, when that moment comes and the match is over and now you're national champ and it's announced. It's very hard to describe to someone else in any field of uh, work when you've accomplished your goal, how you feel if they haven't had the same experience. But try to share with us what is that moment when it does arrive and that realization is there. It's, uh, you're, you're on cloud nine at that time. You're, you're just on top of the world thinking you're fine and dandy. Nothing can, nothing can take it away and you know, and everybody else is just below you, and you're, you're up top, just trying to settle down and enjoy and relax. And kind of like Muhammad Ali. Exactly. I'm the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had that song at that moment, did you? Yeah. At, at, after I got guy, I can't believe it. It was just, it was just great. You know, it was, it was real nice. I, I really, really, it's, it's a feeling that uh, a lot of people don't get to experience. But yeah, that's when for some, sure. But. Uh, a lot of people experience it in many ways as you know everybody has their own thing mm -hmm. but once you experience that feeling it kind of kind of makes you hungry and you just keep, keep wanting to experience it all the time yeah. Yeah. thank you the Lord. ultimate high yeah and what a mature attitude Tony yes, I mean this is just marvelous how when did you start developing your philosophy I mean has this all come from coach Owen or did you get some inputs during your high school days or before that from your family where does all this maturity well, come from um, I think a lot of it comes from my family. My parents have set a lot of responsibility through, on me through the years. And, uh, and I've set a lot of it on myself because I, I set little goals for myself, you know, and say this is what I want to do and so on and so forth. And also through, uh, through uh, in high school I, I learned a lot. And, uh, but a lot of it does come from my parents, especially my dad. He's a real, real positive uh, guy. He's real uh, tremendous about the, about mental preparation and that's where I think I get it from mm -hmm. he's he's so strong-minded and he thinks uh, as long as, you, as he thinks if you uh, if, if you learn to control your 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 uh, your head and uh, in that part you'll uh, you'll go a lot of places because mm -hmm. he said not, the strongest thing in your body is your is your brain yeah. and so know. he's that's I think that's where I get a lot of it from yeah is from my dad. Has this been reinforced by Coach Owen now? Uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it gets reinforced uh, by every coach, I yeah. think, and, uh, and he, Coach Owen sure has done a tremendous job about it, you know, reinforcing it, but it, uh, it's, it's nice to have all the support as far as family, and, mm -hmm. and back home I have a lot of support from uh, high school teachers and coaches too, but uh, that, that's what makes it nice. I would imagine your parents were pretty proud of you. Yeah, they are. They were, as a matter of fact, they're going to drive down to the Nationals to watch me wrestle, but they were caught up in Tacoma watching my little brother at their state tournament. <laughs> they didn't make great. a choice. No. <laughs> uh, Coach Owen uh, informed me uh, when I was talking about doing this program with him that you're from a rather large family. And so exactly. I have, uh, there's eight kids in our family. We have a little baby, uh, two-year-old baby brother, and he's brought a lot of excitement to us, and, and my, uh, my mom and dad. And uh, I think that's uh, a lot of it has to do, my attitude has to do a lot with that, is uh, coming from a large family, you learn to share, and you learn to be real positive towards the future for each other. And uh, we're real supportive towards each other, so that makes it real nice. You've been in, in the athletic program long enough to see a lot of different kinds of individuals on your high school team, your college team, and the other teams that you compete against. There's another kind of athlete I want you to uh, comment about. 
there's some individuals and they have great physical ability. They're very talented. They're physically very strong, uh, but they're not mentally strong. And you see them in uh, basketball or wrestling or tennis, whatever it might be, that they they seem to have a desire to win. Uh, and I know there's more to the whole process than, than the score, but they don't realize their potential when they're out there. The, when pressure comes upon them, they really have difficulty. It, it, I'd like to get you to comment on that. Is, is that because they don't work on the mental in the way? They may, they may have trained well, uh, put in the hours, but is it lack of mental toughness? Uh, for some kids it is. Some kids are real, real uh, negative towards themselves. They don't think they can accomplish certain things. And uh, once, I mean, they, they can su uh, be successful at a certain level of competition, but once it comes down to crunch time, they're not used to uh, being in that position that they they don't know what to do. They just kind of fold, it folds from underneath them. And you have to be in that situation numerous amount of times to be able to come out on top. Even though you're, as Laura said, you're so mature for your age and you're so positive, but I would have to assume that during your years in high school and now at North Idaho College, both academically and in your wrestling, that every day is not equally fun, that you've had your challenges. And would you take a moment to tell us uh, two things really. One is what was one of your low moments, that is, when the challenge, even though you're very positive, that you, you had your greatest challenge and then I would assume one of your greatest moments of uh, excitement was the national championship. Exactly. Um, it's, uh, you're right, it, not every day is, uh, <laughs> is real fun and exciting, but uh, it, uh, it definitely uh, makes you think and wonder sometimes about what you can really do or what you can accomplish but uh, it's uh, no matter how tough it gets and how hard it becomes as long as you think you you uh, you're you can come out on top I think uh, that's what that's the best thing you got going for you. Have you, have you had a particular match that comes to mind that you was a low uh, No I just you know those national uh, the national championship I I'd lost to the kid before earlier on in the season, and I wasn't um, wrestling too good back then. Is that then. the one that you wrestled in the championship? Exactly. What school was he uh, He was from Bismarck. He was from uh, his hometown. And mm -hmm. uh, and I thought, well, before I went out there, uh, we were talking. We said, well, I can go out there. And, you know, I got second place wrapped up. But then I said to myself, I ain't selling for second place. I said, I'd just go out there and wrestle and give it what you got and see what happens. And that's why I went out there. How, how did that score come out? How, I mean, and you won, but what was it? Uh, what was the score in the match? It was, um, he, uh, he took me down for takedown right at first. And uh, I went away from pressure when I shot in. And, and that's what got me taken down. And then after that, I, I was awarded an escape. And then I took him down. So uh, about, that's five to, five to two. And then um, he escaped again, uh, and then I took him back down. And with the riding time, it came out s in the third round, se uh, seven to three. Oh, so it was a decisive. It was, yeah. It was. I. It was. It was real nice because uh, I uh, once I took control of the match. Once I I started wrestling, I uh, I pretty much took control of it, and and I knew I I was going to win it, and I just kept pounding away, kept wrestling, and. And Owen was, Coach Owen was out in the uh, sidelines, focusing, stay focusing, because they gave me, they gave me a stall warning, and uh, he said, "Don't let that lose your concentration." And I just kept plugging away, and and it came out my way. It was, it was nice. Yeah, that's great. Um, can we talk about your future? What are your future plans? Where are you going? Um, I'm not sure. I'm right now I'm planning on returning back here for at, for another year at North Idaho College mm -hmm. and uh, wrestling and then uh, uh, transfer to a big four-year school and continue wrestling and also further my education. I w I'd like to be a, uh, a teacher be going to education and uh, I'm looking in the field of biology. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've starting to find an interest in biology and wow. that's where I'm kind of gearing up and other than that I don't have no real future plans, you know. I just kind of go day by day and kind of take things one one step at a time. Okay. Okay. In relation uh, to that, although you so you take things one day at a time, and you're very positive about that, but you know you've mentioned some of the goals that you have. So I, I just don't want to leave the wrong impression. Even though you work on things one day at a time, you also are planning out ahead, aren't you? Where, yes. Where you want to be? Um, 
exactly. I kind of set little uh, short-term goals for myself. And there is some long-term goals, but uh, I like to go more short-term goals, you know, like in the near future, not five years down the road, but uh, just uh, near future goals. And, and after I accomplish one, I kind of set another one. That kind of gets you looking forward towards what's coming up, I think. When you have, uh, a, in the classroom, and Lloyd's been very good to stress the academics today in the interview, uh, I would assume that taking different classes as you have to in a liberal arts program, that some disciplines are easier for you than others, and some are more of a challenge. How do you take on those that are the most difficult, just like you take on different opponents, uh, some are more difficult than others? Well, you tend to spend more time in that subject that's giving you <coughs> giving you the most problems and uh, uh, as the, most of them would be your core your core classes and you you take a take a level of uh, of intensity and you say well I'm got to spend this time here got to study here and you just bring it down and the easier subjects are, you kind of take those at last cuz they will be easier for you so you can you can do things, you know. So there's a real stuff. parallel in preparation in both of those things. Exactly. It, uh, just like wrestling, you take a, yeah, you break down your toughest opponent, opponent, and then you you work down. Uh, I like to work. I usually like to work from top, from de bottom to top, and that's usually you're geared up to. But sometimes you have to work from top to bottom, and that's that's where that's how it works in academics. I think. You, you brought something to mind that I haven't thought of before. Like teachers as coaches, I would assume that those courses are giving the most difficulty that you would go spend more time with those instructors or tutors or someone because you need more instruction on technique mm, exactly. and information. Was that correct? Yeah, exactly. Like um, you, uh, whatever, we usually go like, as far as wrestling goes, you always go as whatever it takes to accomplish it. Mm. So whatever it takes to, to get that A or get that C, whatever you, your goal is or whatever you need to get in that class, you're going to have to go out and do it. You're going to have to, if it means calling up your instructor and asking him for extra assignment or you know find a tutor then that's what that's what it takes mm. to, to do it. Lloyd? Uh, just curious and on a routine uh, when you go on a trip for example do you normally take your books along and have some time? Uh, sometimes you, you you do take your books but you really don't have much time yeah. it's a lot most of the time you're wrestling you're trying to get some rest or sleep but um, you, you can find time to do to do. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm, I'm sorry we're out of time. Yeah. I have the signal that, we're, that the time is up and I want to thank Frank Velasquez who is the national champion of community college wrestlers this year 1991 at weight 134 and also we're very proud to announce that he's an all-American academic student and we're very pleased that you're returning to North Idaho College and we thank you for being with us today. All right, thank you. And we thank Lloyd for his fine questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you've enjoyed our program and we'd like to invite you to be with us again next week at the same time when we will discuss an important issue. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. North Idaho College Public Forum is videotaped live by Telemedia Services on the campus of North Idaho College for viewing at this more appropriate time. We invite you to catch the North Idaho College Public Forum the same time next week on this television station.